how to export a movie as individual frames in Final Cut Pro and then use those frames to do rotoscoping using Photoshop. So I created this short little movie of my husband opening and closing his hand. I'm going to just open it and show you the little movie. It's only four seconds long. So here is the movie of him opening and closing his hand. It's on the desktop of my Mac. I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro and I'm going to go import media and I'm going to click on the on the um on the little video and import it into the library. And then I'm going to have to create a new project which I'm going to call hand opening and closing. And then once I've done that, I'm going to select the media and drag it down to the timeline. I can't do that until I've created the project. Once it's on the timeline, I'm going to click on it to select it. And then I'm going to click share. And then add destination. So I'm clicking on it. I'm hitting share. I'm hitting add destination. And then that's going to give me a, let's see, so the share, add destination, and that's going to give me a pop-up window. And I have to click image sequence and bring it over into one of the choices. So I just drag it over, and then now I've got image sequence as one of my choices. And when I share it, it's going to create a folder uh, I selected my desktop as the destination, and it's going to have an entire sequence of images that is the video. Make sure to click PNG for your images. That's Portable Network Graphics from the drop-down menu. So um, there's the folder. I'm creating the folder. I'm hitting Share, and you're now going to see the sequence of images in a folder on my desktop. And the nice thing is they're all numbered, they're in the right order. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting them into well, onto the desktop of another computer because I'm using Photoshop. So bear with me while I drag them into another computer from Google Drive. And now I have this image sequence. I don't need to rename them because they're already numbered in order. So I'm going to now open up Photoshop, and I'm going to do File, Scripts, uh, Import Image Stack, or Stack Images. And I'm going to have to hit Browse so I can find the folder. And I just, I find it, and I click on it, and I'm going to select all the images from beginning to end. And once I have imported them, they're not imported yet. You have to click on the top image, hit shift, click on the bottom image, and that'll select all of them. And then you're going to import them, and they will be imported into a perfectly lined up stack in Photoshop. So those are actually your animation frames. However, I want to get rid of the background, and I want to fill in the hand and arm. So... You, you can see it's going real fast. They're just importing the images in a stack. They're stacking them. They're lining them up perfectly. They're all the same size. It's all the stuff that you used to be able to do by hand, but with Adobe Creative Cloud uh, Photoshop 2018, if you know how to do it, it just does it for you. So now I've got my image stack. I'm now going to go to the timeline. Uh, let me go to Windows so I can see the timeline. And I'm just going to real quick play the sequence just to make sure that it looks right, that the images are all in the correct order. So I'm doing um, Create Frame Animation. You just click on that. And then you're going to click uh, Create Frames from Layers. So when you do that, you should get all the... Uh, layers in a row so they become individual animation frames and when you click on it you see the hand opening and closing so I've checked the sequence is correct they're all lined up so now I can go layer by layer and I can delete the background so if you go select subject usually that works and then you go select inverse and then uh, edit cut 
Um, but in this case, because I had a floor as a background and not a green screen, I had to use the quick selection tool. The nice thing about the quick selection tool is you just sort of drag it over the area you want selected, and it's pretty good at finding the edges of things. So I used a combination. I, the quick selection tool actually worked pretty darn well here. I only had to erase in a couple of areas. So I'm basically selecting the hand and arm, then selecting inverse, and then edit cut, and I'm doing that layer by layer. So that what I'm doing is as soon as I'm done with the layer, I'm locking it and then hiding it so that I don't accidentally select or cut anything from the incorrect layer. So I'm just going layer by layer, getting rid of all the backgrounds, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill the, um, the hand and arm with black. Let me show you how to do that in a minute. Let me just get through this image stack. So now I'm done and I'm going through and I have to use the same technique of quick selection. And then I do edit, fill, black. You can't just select all, it'll select the entire frame, so you have to use the quick selection tool and drag it over the arm and hand, but it doesn't take that long because there's nothing else there. But if you click select all, it would just turn the entire frame black. So I'm going layer by layer, and I'm filling them all in black. It's a little time-consuming, but you just do, you select it, and then you do edit fill. Since the process is repetitive, I have... Uh, cut out part of the video in the interest of brevity to sh um, complete the process. But when I'm done, every single layer has a black hand in it in various positions. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at the sequence again on the timeline. So click on Window click on timeline and the timeline will again appear and you can hit play and make sure that your sequence uh, makes sense. In this case, I'm going to have to definitely do a little bit of editing. You see how there's a little line where his shirt ends and his wrist begins, but it's in, visible only in one of the frames. So I'm going to have to go and edit that. And I'm going to have to edit a little, there's a little area of a sleeve that I have to fill in. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the timeline and then I'm looking and comparing the timeline with the layer uh, window. And I'm clicking on whatever layer is visible, unlocking that layer. It's the layer that has the eye next to it. I'm unlocking that layer and I'm editing it. So I'm editing each frame in the sequence. And if you look at the timeline, the frame that is visible first is the bottom layer at the bottom of the stack, and it goes up. So you just find the one in the layer menu with the eye. Um, you click on each frame in the timeline. You unlock that layer. You quickly edit it to fix any inconsistencies, like that little gap in the sleeve that's in some of the in some of the frames. That's probably where I neglected to select a little tiny bit of his sleeve, but I'm just editing frame by frame so that the entire sequence looks more consistent. What you don't want is a lot of that blinking back and forth because there's a frame that's inconsistent in there. Like I filled in that area of his wrist. So now when I do it, there's a lot less inconsistency in the rotoscoping. If there's a little bit of a shiver, sometimes that can make the make the rotoscoping sequence interesting, but if if there's um, a lot of inconsistency, it'll distract people from whatever story you're trying to tell. So I'm just going through, cleaning up frame by frame. I didn't want to edit this part out because I don't want to um, under-emphasize just how important it is. It's going through, it's just a little bit of patience to get your artwork to look more professional. And when I'm done, I'm going to make all the layers visible, and I'm going to save this as a PSD, a Photoshop file, and I will call it Hand Opening and Closing Stack. And having this file saved means I can use it for later. One of the things that I decided to do, because I know I'm going to import it as export it, sorry, as a video, is... I want to put a green background in. A green screen is very, very useful because if I go back into Final Cut Pro, 
I can delete the green screen and layer the hand over anything else I want. So I'm going to go to the very bottom layer and I'm going to add a green screen uh, as the bottom layer. And it's going to be visible in every single one of the frames. So I'll just go layer new. I'm picking the color green. I'm putting, I'm dragging that color to the very bottom and I'm clicking on the little eye so it's visible in every single frame of the animation. I'm going to give the animation one last test on the timeline to make sure that the sequence looks good and there's no glaring problems. And now with a green background, I can see a couple of little areas where I need to erase, where I, I forgot stuff. So I'm going to fix those real quick. And then File, Export, Save for Web, if I would like to make a GIF. I changed the size to 40%. You have to reduce the size till you can see the entire hand in the screen. Um, I can also later take my entire sequence and uh, export it as keyframes into Adobe Animate. I can layer it on top of other animations and give it a background and I can basically rotoscope any scene that I want that might be too difficult to draw on my own. The creative possibilities of this are really endless. I can actually film any live action sequence I want and then later use it in an animation using this technique. And of course I don't have to just stick to filling it in black, I can also draw on top of the photograph. Since the earliest days of animation, rotoscoping has been used by professional animators in order to recreate realistic action sequences.